Hello and welcome to the tutorial on Python. Today I'll be showing you how to program and play Cards Against Humanity. Now what Cards Against Humanity is, is a card game whereby you have a series of questions and answers and the idea is to submit the funniest answers to those questions and the person who asks the question will also select the funniest answer and then give that uh, and then give that question card to the person with the funniest answer as like a point to show that they've won the round. And what's great about this game is that it is entirely um, up to you how to play this game. It's really open. Even in the instruction manual, there's like it mentions about 30 different ways of playing the game. And in the one I've got, I don't know, it doesn't even show you how you win. It doesn't even tell you how to win. So it's completely down to you. And you can get some very funny combinations, very apt com uh, combinations of a question and an answer. And um, generally, it's I think it's a really great game to play. So I thought it's great enough to try and mimic it in Python. Normally, in Cards Against Humanity, you'll have one person sitting out each round so they can ask the question and then judge to see which one has the best answer. But what's great about the program I... I'm going to show you is that you'll have the computer selecting the question and you'll just have the players answering every time so one person won't have to essentially sit out each round and be judge. What I'll be showing you is firstly a couple of assumptions that I've made in my code which um, I will share with you and then I'll be showing you how I've written the code and then I'll be going over three different ways of playing this game in Python, how I've programmed it in Python. So this is another great example of how you can do many things to get the same result in Python. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to go through are these assumptions that I've made. So the first assumption is that the computer asks the question every turn. The second assumption is that you get a completely new hand every turn. So how you choose normally your best answer is that in your hand, you'll have a series of potential answer cards, and then you choose what answer card you want to submit to the question that has been asked. So in this case, your hand is, you get a completely new hand every turn, whereas uh, normally in the variants that I've played without Python, um, you submit one of your answer cards and you still have the rest remaining. And so that is our second assumption. The third assumption is that you, the question deck and the answer deck get randomly shuffled every turn. So you don't know what question and what answers you are going to get. And then finally, the, ans the answers are randomised every turn as well. That's kind of the same as the third. But, okay. So, now on to the code. So, what I've done here is I've created two lists. One for questions and one for answers. So, we've got five questions. All genuine to the game. I have the game at home. So, I've just literally taken five questions out of the game. And put them into the Python um, string here. And then, or well, a series of strings here. And then what I've done is I've done the same with the answers. And we've got 15 answers, 15 genuine answers from the game. So you've got f five genuine questions and 15 genuine answers. All in the list, all in two lists. The next thing I'll do is we're going to have to shuffle the question cards and the answer cards. So we don't know what questions and answers we're going to get. And we do that by importing the random module. And then we to shuffle it, we type in random.shuffle. And then in the shuffle brackets, in brackets within shuffle, we type in the name of the list. And then what that does is it randomly shuffles the list. So now in here, what's position number one or zero in Python will uh, no longer be that position. Or maybe it's all completely randomized. And what I've done here while I was writing, I did a few print checks. I think it's always very useful to do some print checks. would highly recommend it. And you should know roughly at each step what you are expecting. So a print checks, I think, are really the way to go. 
So next I'm going to show you the, is the first combination. So the first combination is simply just the computer playing. It's going to give you a question and answer combination and we're just going to check it out, see how it's like and then, you know, who knows. So let's, let's do this. Let's run the first variant of this game with essentially no players, but who knows. So the first thing is, what don't you want to find in a kebab? And then it's blowing my boyfriend so hard he shits. So, you know, it doesn't really go well together. But, you know, other combinations may do so. So why am I sticky? Memes. What's my secret power? Mad cow disease. Yeah. Oh, did did something there. Tapped it twice. What would grandma find disturbing? Oddly charming. Mad cow disease. So, you know, we get repeating here. We get repeats because these are genuinely randomly shuffled. What's the next Happy Meal toy? Goblins. And so on and so forth. For the second variant, we're going to keep this question card here because we want the question to be running every time, and these um, variants from now on just provide answers. So, what we've done here is we have created two players. I deleted a third because I'm going to run through that with you. And what we've done is we separated each player as a separate function. So we're going to call players one cards and we're going to call player two's cards. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run with you creating the third player. So first thing I'm going to do is type in def and then player three and then call that. They've got PQ, so let's call this R, put colon, and then put R equal to answer cards. And then make sure it's number long because otherwise you'll just get the repeat of player two. And then remember to return R. So now we've got three players. And what we must do now is we must run the function. So we get the question. And so it's the functions are loaded into the Python code. And then we've got the question here. What, if you look on our output here, what don't you want to find? I've missed move this up. What don't you want to find in your kebab? So let's see what player one has as the answer. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, that capital L. I have to rerun this again. So, what's the next Happy Meal toy? Make sure I type in the function correctly. And then we call it player one, call it extremely tight trousers. And we can do the same thing for player two, mad cow disease. The same thing for player three, hope. So, here we go. And we just keep running this again and again and again. So you run the code again, get uh, what grandma find disturbing, it oddly charming, and then we have three separate answers. So that's the second variant of the game. The third variant of the game is instead of separating each function by the player, we're going to separate, we're going to create one function for each turn and let's call it every time a new, we want to have a new turn in play. Oh. And each player it's going to get three cards. So we're just changing it every, ever so slightly and just, you know, um, playing on the fact that this game is so open to interpretation. So what I've done here, turn one, and then we've called two functions, two variables within the function, and then put each variable equal to the answer cards, and we've put three different answer cards for um, each player and then we've got to return those two variables when we call them and so if we run this and then we type in turn and then one and one press enter we have three for player one and three for player two we can have as many as you want we can limit to just 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 one to each player but essentially what we've done here how this is different to the ones above is this is turn based rather than player based and you can uh, choose your own answers as well if you wanted to so what we've done here is we've gone through three different ways of playing the same game and I've shown you um, and I hope you have lots of fun playing this with this code in Python and also 
playing the game itself. I think it is a, a great game and it can get so great, so funny and yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and check out more of my tutorials and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching.